our adversary is out there. They are going to work every day, trying to work harder, smarter, faster than us. But we are making sure that that does not happen. The Guardians, Airmen, and partners of Space Systems Command are working with unstoppable urgency to innovate and act now. Delivering solutions to emerging threats, creating resilient space architectures we can all rely on, especially during times of crisis and conflict. The fight could happen tonight, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen in a couple of years, but we need to start innovating now and that's exactly what we're doing. For Space Systems Command, working faster means breaking from the status quo, exploiting existing space architectures and capabilities in creative new ways, working with commercial industry, innovators and tech startups, and allied nations to exploit, buy, and build, to deliver better, faster, and more affordably. We are advancing the space architecture that we have up there right now, making sure that it's optimal, making sure that we get new space architecture set up, prototyping, experiments, to ensure that we can outpace the enemy tomorrow. To maintain our lead in space, Space Systems Command has embraced a new culture, empowering its people to race forward, speak up, and connect with industry in unprecedented new ways. Our people are agile, they continue our partnerships, they are working collaboratively day after day in order to contribute to the big warfighter purpose. Space is a team sport. We have to work together to provide integrated, resilient capability and speed in order to fight through any contingency crisis. Space Systems Command is moving fast to maintain U.S. superiority in space, running a marathon of sprints, thinking differently, acting boldly, empowering at every level to make space work for us all at space systems command space starts here an incredible mission for sure turning back to the pad now falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket developed and manufactured by spacex known for its safe reliable and cost-effective access to space it was also the first orbital class rocket capable of reflight now, the two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle stands at 229 feet tall, and you can see it there on your screen. When it's fully fueled around the T-minus two-minute mark, it'll be holding just over one million pounds of fuel and oxidizer. Engine chill. Starting from the top of the rocket is the payload fairing, which is a protective shell that encases the payload for satellite being sent to space. The fairings are made up of a carbon composite material and have a 17-foot diameter, which contains enough space to accommodate an average-sized fire truck. The fairing, made up of two halves, will separate and jettison away from the vehicle, exposing the payload once Falcon 9 reaches space. You can see there on your screen a photo of today's payload being encapsulated about a week ago. Now, once jettisoned, the payload fairing halves will be falling back to Earth. Stage as one fuel load is complete. Good call out there. The fairing halves will fall back to Earth and splash down in the Atlantic Ocean, where they'll be recovered by our fairing recovery ship, Doug. And moving on down the rocket stack, we have the Falcon 9 second stage. The second stage is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC engine, which is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. After stage separation, the MVAC engine will ignite and carry the payload to its final orbit. The second stage is connected to Falcon 9's first stage by the black composite inner stage, which houses the MVAC engine and the system that decouples the two stages during stage separation. Shortly after liftoff, the two stages of Falcon will separate. Stage 2 will continue to take the payload to its desired orbit, and Stage 1, also known as the booster, will return to Earth for recovery and reuse on a future mission. Falcon 9 uses a combination of engine burns to slow down, along with its four titanium grid fins to guide itself to landing. Below that is the Below that is the first stage, which is powered by the nine Merlin 1D engines. These provide the initial thrust to lift Falcon 9 off the ground through the lower, thicker part of the atmosphere. And each of those Tanks Merlin... Tanks are pressing for strong back retract. 
another good call out there. Each of those Merlin 1D engines delivers about 190,000 pounds of thrust at sea level, which gives Falcon 9 a combined 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Now the Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs that will deploy just before landing and allow for vertical touchdown on a drone ship or a landing pad. As I mentioned earlier, today's booster is flying for its fourth time and we'll be attempting to land it today on our drone ship a short fall of... retract has started. Another good call out. We'll be attempting to land it on our drone ship a short fall of Gravitas, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. And on your screen right now, you can see the clamp arms opening around the Falcon 9 second stage. Right next to the rocket, you can see that large truss structure, which is the transporter erector, or TE, and it's used to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to vertical. It also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellite up until the moment Falcon 9 transitions to internal power. With just a few minutes remaining in the countdown, let's take a moment to hear from the United States Space Force, our customer for today's mission. Now the payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. And as a reminder, weather is still a watch item for today's mission. Stage two locks load is complete. And good call out there for stage two locks loading completion. Now you may have noticed the white clouds around the rocket. Those clouds are formed as the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface vents overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when the gas comes out into the warmer Florida air, it condenses the water in the air and forms those clouds that you see there on your screen. Ground good. Another good call out there. Coming up at the T minus 60 second minute mark, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light the M1D engines for liftoff. And about Falcon 15. 9 is in startup. Good call out there. F9 is in startup. Stage one and stage two begin pressuring for launch. This is the mission director. Go for launch. Great call out there. LD is go for launch. At about T minus 30 seconds, all. T minus 30 seconds. At T minus 30 seconds, all systems are go for launch for today's mission. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engines full power. And let's. 
T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Now during the rocket's ascent, we tilt or gibble the engines and that'll turn the rocket horizontally in a maneuver known as a gravity turn. So the rocket is still going up. Power telemetry nominal. Good call out there. So the rocket is still going up, but now it's also headed horizontally away from the launch pad. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down on the first stage in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is a critical moment during flight because the, supersonic. because the combined stress tr stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Max Q. Good call out there for Max Q. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled down to Earth and get into orbit. And to give you an idea of the speed of the rocket, you can track our progress to orbit by keeping an eye on the stage one telemetry at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Now we're going to have back, chill. another good call out there. We're going to have several events coming up in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff or MECO, stage separation. Second engine start one or SES one and fairing separation. Main engine cutoff or MECO is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Followed by this, the MVAC engine on the second stage will light, which is called out as second engine start one or SES one. Now this engine burn lasting several minutes will propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. In addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate shortly after SES-1, so keep an eye out for all of these events coming up in just a few moments from now. Nominal trajectory. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC startup. And there you heard and maybe even saw those events that happened just back to back, which were again Miko stage separation and SES1. Coming up in just a few moments, we should hear the call out for fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. Good call out there for fairing separation and a beautiful view of Earth from space. As mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrie retrieve these fairing halves using our recovery vessel, Doug, once they fall back to Earth. And these are some absolutely phenomenal views today. Now, we're currently at the T plus four minute mark into today's mission. Next major milestone coming up will be just past the T, six minute, T plus six minute mark, um, which will be the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we'll be relighting three of the M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines. This will help slow down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's denser, lower atmosphere. We need to slow it down to reduce re-entry forces, which ultimately helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface, which is why our flight-proven vehicles look, li look the way they do. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. As you can see on your screen, on the bottom left, the first stage is decelerating and heading to its rendezvous point at sea. 
Now, reusability is, of course, key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investment in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission is... Two nominal trajectories. Another good call out there. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission is flying for its fourth time. And while this booster is on its fourth trip to space, we're working towards qualifying our fleet of Falcon boosters and fairings to support 40 missions each. And for those following along, we're currently at 28 flights of a single Falcon booster, which is absolutely amazing. Increasing Falcon's flight count provides valuable information on repeated reuse, which is a critical element for making life multiplanetary. Coming up in just about 15 seconds from now, we should hear that call out for the first stage entry burn startup. Stage one, entry burn startup. And great call out there for entry burn startup of the Falcon 9 first stage. And you can actually see which engines are lit with that graphic at the lower left hand corner of your screen. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And great call out there for entry burn shutdown of the Falcon 9 first stage. The Merlin engines on the Falcon's first stage are optimized for sea leveling, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And while it won't be visible on this webcast, the single MVAC engine on the second stage has a much wetter nozzle and is optimized to operate in space, producing 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up in couple moments, we will have the landing burn of the first stage. The landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle in order to allow for a soft touchdown on the drone ship. Now this will be the fourth landing burn of this booster. As I mentioned earlier, this booster previously supported CRS-32. Stage 32. 1 transonic. Another good call out there. This stage booster 2 has entered terminal guidance. And another good call out. So this booster previously supported CRS-32, a commercial resupply service mission to the International Space Station, a separate secure national security mission, NROL-69, and one Starlink mission. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage one landing burn. And there's that call out for landing burn startup of the Falcon 9 first stage. Landing like deploy. Nominal orbit insertion. And there you saw and heard the call Stage out. Stage one landing confirmed. There you saw and heard the call out for successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. We also heard the call out for Seco 1. Again, this was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage. And the second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase, which will last about an hour before a second restart of Merlin Vacuum Engine, also known as SES-2. We're going to take a break during that coast and we'll return just before SES-2. See you then.